welcome back! Maybe, if you came for the makeup video. If you haven't, then hi! How's it going? It's Universal Gums time! Box is here. Gotta open it- oh. Dude! Alright, look, Universal Gums, don't do that. Don't tell me where it's from before I open the box! What the hell's wrong with you? You're spoiling the surprise! The whole thing, the whole point is for me to not know what's in here and then get all surprised when I open the box. That way I can open it and be like, Oh wow, it's Belgium, but I already knew. Not cool. Unless they've been doing that, but I don't ever remember seeing it, so. This box is different too. Anywho, welcome to Belgium. Center. You never know. Usual stuff in the back. We've all seen it. We know what's going on. Whoa, the card is bigger. Why'd you make the card bigger? What's happening? What's going on? Welcome to Belgium with the giant card here. For reasons unknown. Doesn't this use more paper? Hmm. Wow, there's oh boy. Alright, so let's uh let's just start with the with the, there's a lot of stuff happening in here. Look how big these paragraphs are. I don't know if I want to spend enough I don't wanna know I don't know if I should spend the time reading all of it to you. I don't know if you guys care or not. But we'll do it, whatever. Alright, warning. Lots of good chocolate ahead. <laughs> now you're speaking my language. We've got to say it. If you're not a fan of chocolate, you just might want to hand this box off to your closest chocolate-loving friend. Hey, anyone else out there have chocolate boxes you don't want? Look me up. And if you love chocolate, who doesn't? You're in for a serious treat. We could take you to Belgium without giving you a full tour of their chocolatey creations. From truffles to pralines to filled chocolate bars, we think we've covered just about everything you could want from a trip to some of the world's famous chocolatiers. Mm. Of course, there's more to Belgium than chocolate. We've covered that too, with some wonderful surprises from throughout the country. In 1830, Belgium became an independent nation, no longer under the rule of the Netherlands. They kept what they liked from the Dutch. Uh, Speculoos cookies, for example, then created a culture and a country that's distinctly their own. As you'll soon discover, there's much more to this small country than you've ever imagined. It's a place we couldn't wait to visit, and then didn't want to leave. With a diet of chocolate waffles and beer, how could you? What do you want, Endo? The tiny animal wants to say hello. Hi, tiny animal. Look at the people. They're here to see- they want to say hi to you. And you're just too busy trying to look at my face for- stop. Reasons unknown. We're like, why? Why? Comfy. So we have all kinds of things here. Hi there. Be part of the, the party and participate rather than being a slope. So this is Belgium. Yeah, I bet it smells good. So let's find out what we got first. Be, be a part of everything. Can you? So we can start with something tiny. He's very- oh my god, what's that? Ever since he ate a whole bunch of chocolate, Despite the fact that it almost killed you, it didn't really, but we took away emergency so you gotta do it because dogs plus chocolate equal bad things. He's been a chocolate hound. This isn't the first time he's tried to get into it either. Got some nice stuff in here. Look at this fancy boxes and things and things and stuff and things and stuff. <gasps> oh, waffle. So let's start with something simple. We've got this little guy right in here, just all by himself. Belgian, um, just a milk chocolate bar. Caramelized biscuit to taste. Interesting. So let's see how long the paragraph is for this bad boy. Here he is, right here. I kind of, this is actually kind of handy. They've upped their, uh, their information, it looks like, too, so that they can tell you, like, you know, nuts and things and look out for this and that. So I guess that's kind of handy. Luckily, I'm not allergic to anything that I know of. So this is the Caramelized Biscuit Milk Chocolate Bar. We've mentioned a lot of good things about Belgian chocolate so far. It's obviously delicious, it's carefully crafted, and it's become Belgium's pride and joy. But like any story, the tale of Belgian chocolate is not without a bit of tragedy. When Belgium became an independent nation in 1830, its King Leopold II set about to conquering the Congo. What a choice of places to go, dude. Good gravy. He and the Belgian troops colonized the Congo from 1885 to 1908, looting the territory for cocoa crops, diamonds, minerals, ivory, and rubber. Dude, ivory, come on. Elephants. You suck. 
That initial supply chain largely helped to make Belgium the powerhouse for chocolate that it is today. While this colonization is a sour part in Belgium's history, what history doesn't have that? It's also important to remember that uh, what contributed to the chocolate we enjoy today. With Speckloos cookies and rich milk chocolate, this bar is a mix of the best of Belgium and a bit of the worst. Kind of a sad way to end that paragraph. It's like, oh, it's good. But sad. Sad chocolate. Anyway, we're gonna eat it. It's probably gonna be delicious. Anyway, regardless of the history. Kind of looks like a Kit Kat. A little bit. Makes me think of Kit Kats, anyway. In its shape, like it's a giant Kit Kat, kind of. Hello! See? Kind of Kit Kat y. Kit Kat y. Soft. So it kind of looks like there's like a. Like, not. I mean, not 100% solid. Kind of like they have the innards and then they coat it in chocolate. It's really easily melting. So there are tiny bits in there that I guess are the biscuit bits. I don't know, kind of weird. I guess so. Otherwise, it's very soft, very creamy, very lovely. It does have like a like it is milk chocolate, but then it has kind of the I can see what they're going with, with the biscuit flavor thing. Because it's like, yeah, I can kind of taste what they're talking about. It's very subtle, but it's still there. It's pretty good. And then you got the occasional crunchy bits of it in there. I think that's a good way to start the Belgium box with some good chocolate. I'm actually looking forward to the um, these chips that we got going on here. But we'll get to them in just a bit. Once again, it's time for late night snackies with Nicole. In this case, I have some chips. Very good. These are Roger Rogers black pepper and sea salt. Belgium has a long love affair with potatoes. In fact, Belgians are credited with originally inventing french fries, not the French as you might suspect. As the story goes, there was a town of poor villagers living in the, I'm gonna mess this up, Meuse Valley in the south of Belgium during the year 1680. Mostly they survived by catching small fish, slicing them, and then frying them. However, when the river froze, there, froze over, there were no fish to be found. The villagers used potatoes to supplement their diet, preparing them the same way as the fish by slicing and frying them. From there, the first french fries were born. Although, honestly, with that diet, we're impressed anyone survived to tell the tale. Dude, potatoes are good. Over time, the fries' popularity grew in both Belgium and France, and eventually Americans were the first... Uh, Americans were first introduced to them en masse during World War I. As the American army fought alongside the Belgian army, the mess cooks served traditional food, such as french fries, to the Belgians. Since the Belgian soldiers spoke French, the Americans mistakenly nicknamed them French fries, and the name has certainly stuck. That sucks. Poor Belgium. We love you. Thanks for the french fries. Today, potatoes are still a big part of Belgian cuisine, and their peppery potatoes are second to none. Let's try some hand cooked chip. Black pepper and sea salt. They ain't playing on that cracked black pepper. I right, gotta find a good one. Ooh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. He's folded up and he comes with a friend. Yum. Very crunchy. pepper on my chip to before. <laughs> Works for me though. You can't eat just one. Also I'm very hungry. Didn't have dinner tonight. I'm working all day.
microchips bell jump. They're good. I'm gonna keep enjoying these off camera. But... These are pretty tasty. Oh, do you want to know the story of Roger's hand cooked? It has it in Belgium. Belgium. Oh my god. Bel it's in Belgium. I'm sorry. Anyway, it also has it in English. The story of Roger's hand cooked is the story of Roger, a Belgian with an ardent passion for quality food for nature's nutritional bounty. And it is the story of Belgium, the world's fastest growing potato producer. Go Belgium! In Roger's hand cooked, you'll find the very best potatoes Belgian soil has to offer, with a delicious, all natural flavor and a golden yellow color. Every bite brings you to the unforgettable taste of nature. Enjoy! Are we supposed to be all natural? Mm. I'm not even trying to pronounce that. I kind of want to. Gash Max de I don't know what that is. I'm sorry. Anyway, good chips. See you tomorrow. Welcome to really late nights, Nikki's with Nicole. It's like 11. I debated if I wanted to have food or not. Finally decided. Why not? I'm gonna be up for a while. But everyone else is asleep. This is the picnic. Oops, hold on. Walk it. Sucre waffle? I think. I'm not sure how the some of this works out. You probably think you've had a Belgian waffle before, and you're right, you have. You've had a Belgian waffle, or at least an Americanized version of a waffle that was originally called the Brussels waffle. A Belgian man named Maurice Vermersch sold the Brussels waffle at the 1964 World's Fair in Queens, New York. He knew many Americans wouldn't remember the city name Brussels, so instead he sold it to people as the Belgian waffle. Why, why would we? Whatever. Attendees loved it, and as they say, the rest is waffle history, with Belgian waffles showing up everywhere from diners to fancy brunch spots to free hotel breakfasts. However, if you think you've been eating an authentic, authentic waffle from Belgium this whole time, you've been fooled. Here we have the real thing, called a Liege waffle, for the province of Liege, I'm assuming L-I-E-G, in the eastern region of Belgium. Instead of using pancake batter, the Liege waffles uses a dough that's similar to brioche bread. The thick bread, breads of pearl sugar are folded into the dough, then it's cooked on a waffle iron. The pearls of sugar melt and caramelize on the surface for a crispy outside and a rich, dense center. Most Belgians eat with this waffle without any syrup or toppings or utensils. We hope you'll try it that way, at least before picking up the fork and maple syrup. Sure! That sounds delightful. Oh, wow. Okay. It's like, it's one giant waffle thing. For some reason, I thought it was, like, I don't know, two smaller waffles? I don't know why. Oh, it's soft. It's like a real waffle. It's like a real waffle in a package. Yeah. How fun is that? Oh. Thick. I like a cake donut like texture. It's like heavy cake. You're right about it being dense. It's good. Dude, sell those here. People will buy them. And they're right, you don't need the syrup or anything, it's just like cake donut type stuff concept. Mmm, there's some sugar in there. Mmm, that's good, I like that. So Belgium, let's talk. Do you guys eat this as like a breakfast food? Or just like, this is obviously snack time food? I guess. I mean, you know, whatever. Because I feel like if we sold this here, a lot of people would eat it for breakfast because we associate waffles with breakfast. Even though nothing really says that it has to be a thing. But this is pretty tasty. I'm gonna keep enjoying it. I decided to have late night snackies. Waffle style. Hello! And let's have some 
Belgian seashells. Shall we? It's supposed to be chocolatey. <clears throat> and I'm all for it. We've tried plenty of chocolate in three years since we started Universal Yums. We've had peach chocolate from Ukraine and chocolate with Pop Rocks from Israel. That was interesting. I like that. Uh, and ice cream flavored chocolate from Russia. But still, in our vast exploration of the world's chocolate, we've somehow never tried chocolate seashells. That's because they're only a Belgian thing. In 1958, a young Belgian couple wanted to make the chocolate from their company truly stand out. The wife, um, uh, Liliane? designed a unique marbled pattern, mixing white chocolate, milk chocolate, and dark chocolate into a beautiful design. Her husband, Guy, or Guy maybe, I'm not sure, uh, G-U-I, created a special process for making hazelnut filling, and they quickly found success selling beautiful seashell chocolates. I'll try saying that ten times fast. I won't. I'll pass. Also, more hazelnuts in Europe. Hazelnut filling. More parties! Today's chocolate seashells remain one of Belgium's best sellers, and we tried plenty of different seashell chocolates in an effort to find the perfect one for the box. These creamy, perfectly molded chocolates were the clear winner. There are only seven of them, so choose carefully how you want to divvy them up. If you're willing to share them, that is. No! Eat all of them myself. Got a rascal packaging. You got. Fancy drop ditties in a baggie. Let's open baggie. These are fancy. Aw! Well, okay, so there's like, we've got two of each. So we've got this guy, the sort of see the thing. We got the little seahorsey guy. You can't really tell that it's a seahorse, so I'm gonna pick it up. And then, like, just kind of a couple. Are those like not like shrimp? Not shrimp. Anyway, this is my your seahorse. So let's meet Mr. Seahorse. I'm sorry, Mr. Seahorse, I love you, but... Mm. All the chocolates on the outside are very creamy. Got that classic hazelnut filling. All also very creamy. those so I'm not to eat sparingly but they're very good kind of require a, have a bit of milk to go with it <sighs> fancy chocolate hi there someone's being annoying still a little Halloweeny today yes I went to work like this and I've been very curious about this odd I don't know if you can really tell from the color but it's pink, with clearly there are some nuts involved. Perhaps almonds. I'm not really sure. I have two of them. Let's find out! Together! Where are they? Strawberry nougat. Throughout Europe, you'll find nougat everywhere. You'll find a hard, crunchy nougat called turon in Spain. You'll find French nougat called, oh boy, Montlemar. That's so famous, the Beatles wrote about it. You'll find rich Italian nougats filled with hazelnuts and dried citrus, but you know what you won't find anywhere but Belgium? Strawberry nougat. Really? No one else likes strawberry nougat. Anymore. Belgians get creative with their nougat, mixing almonds with fresh strawberries and stay straying far from traditional recipes with egg whites and honey. We'll go along with the ride. Alright. I like me some nougat. Nougat. Done a little thing. Wishy nougat. Maybe. It's stuck to the packaging. Very stuck to the package. It's very friendly. Alright. Nougat away! Soft mm, nougat. Well, I already think more people should make strawberry nougat. Because it's good. Kind of makes me think of strawberry ice cream. Which I'm not really the biggest fan of, but I mean. Usually it's because, like, if I have the choice between chocolate and strawberry, I'm going to do with chocolate. It's 
good. It's got a kind of very mild sweetness to it. Definitely taste all that strawberry, fresh strawberry. I like the inclusion of the almonds. And if you don't like nougat as a texture, maybe not for you, but otherwise. It's a neat little snack. So yes, this is what you want to produce of the nougat. Now ah, what the hell, we'll do one more. They only sent me one of these, so. This is noble, I think. Yes, noble chocolates. This is the creme brulee white chocolate. We all know my thoughts on white chocolate, so. But let's move on. What's not to love about creme brulee? That's true, I don't really have creme brulee all that often. But it's a thick, creamy vanilla custard topped with sugar that's been set on fire, resulting in a perfectly charred top. It's been a part of French cuisine since 1691, first appearing in a cookbook for the royals. There's nothing not to like about it, except there's no chocolate involved, until now. These decadent bars are filled with French creme brulee filling and covered in exquisite white Belgian chocolate. The phrase, good things come in small packages, have never been more true with these bars. Then it's still not true! There's still no chocolate involved! Look at this! Don't talk to me! If you've seen my past videos, you know my thoughts on white chocolate. It ain't real chocolate! Fun fact! Sugar, vegetable oil, cocoa butter, and then other things. Not actual chocolate. Cocoa butter is not equal chocolate. It's a byproduct. So creme brulee, you still missing out on the chocolate! That's my thoughts on the first. Don't not chocolate! So here we are. Ooh, it's kind of like a... It's got a Kit Kat vibe going on. It's double packaged. Because not only is it wrapped in its other cover, it has this gold foil on the outside. <laughs> but yes, Kit Kat vibe. Clearly. With the noble stamped on it, which you probably can't really see because of... Yeah, you can kind of see their shadows. Whatever, let's eat it. I notice I haven't been- oh wow. I haven't been smelling things, I've realized. Mostly because chocolate smells like chocolate. I mean, you know, nothing special about it, but... That's cool. Like, okay, if you've ever smelled burnt sugar... Not like in a bad way, one is caramelizing. It's technically, you're kind of basically, sort of, ish, burning the sugar. But it's fine, because it all works out, because there's a whole plane involved. This 100%, the inside, the creme brulee inside, straight up smells like that. Like, it smells really good. Like, it does smell like... Like you're cooking up straight sugar and it's warming up, turning that nice creamy, not creamy, but that nice caramely brown color, caramelized, golden, no, good stuff. I just want to smell it. I've just touched my nose with it. I just want to smell it. I don't even want to eat it. I just want to smell it all the way. Mm. Anyway, mm. I've just been melting in my mouth the entire time while I'm talking. I mean, white chocolate tastes like white chocolate. Take it or leave it, whatever. I want the inside, though. So. Away from the white chocolate. It's hard to get, like, a distinctive flavor out of it. Because there's so much more white chocolate than the inside. I only get, like, hints of it, and then it's like, well, oh, there's all the white chocolate that you don't like. Hard to get in there. Oh. Eh, I mean, mm. now I'll smell it all day long. I should buy a candle that's creme brulee. That'd be tasty to smell. I mean, not eat. But I'm actually uh, not too sad that I only got one of these because, I mean, meh. My chocolate's never been my thing. So, it's alright. I mean, if you like white chocolate, more power to you. Enjoy it. You know, sugar, sugar, no way. So, white chocolate fans might really enjoy that. Tasty, herbalish. Smelled delicious. Nice and creamy. You know, good consistency. But in the end, not really my bag, but eh, what are you gonna do? Later that night, I have some truffles. Like powdered Hershey kisses with I don't know stuff inside of some kind. These are Hamlet buttercream truffles. In the U.S., our politicians fight about a million different things. Oh my gosh, they do! 
In Belgium, politicians fight about those million things, plus one more, chocolate. Because so much of their economy depends on the superiority of Belgian chocolate, it's a highly regulated industry. In fact, Belgium is only one of two countries in the world where the word chocolate is legally restricted. The other is Switzerland, so this surprises no one. Manufacturers can only label their products as chocolate if they contain, contain at least 35% cocoa solids, 18% cocoa butter, sugar, and milk. But you don't need to look at the ingredients panel to figure out if this is real chocolate. One bite of these cocoa-dusted truffles will give you all the information you need. While the truffles may look like bigger versions of a Hershey Kiss, the similarities stop there. The decadent dark chocolate shell balances perfectly with the light buttercream filling inside. So we're really sorry. After these, we've probably ruined Hershey Kisses forever. Well, probably not. I'm first time. You hear insanity behind me. That's a dog with his favorite squeaky boy ball. Alright, so we've opened the box. We have a quattro. But you can't see inside. Oh! It's a surprise! It's not because we already know what's in there. Let us peel open the plastic. Try and truffle. Maybe. There you go. No doubt they've been jostled around from their trip from Belgium to the US. They smell very much like the kitchen when I'm baking and I'm using awesome cocoa powder. It's very nice. Very lovely. You'll be able to see properly, but here it is our dusted cocoa truffle thingy. Now, the powder on the outside don't play. It's basically straight cocoa powder, I would say. At least it tastes like it. Everything is very smooth, as usual. Try and get a bit of that buttercream myself. Mm, nice. It goes from being very kind of bitter on the outside because it's such dark without no any sweet stuff to a lighter, sweeter inner. It's different than anything I've had before, I would say. I think the powdering on the outside um, adds, I don't know, a little something different extra to it in a way. Most truffles I've had, I mean, I guess they're technically truffles. Um, I'm not sure what makes something a truffle and something else not a truffle. I don't know the definition of a, tr of a truffle. But they're always kind of on the eh. I've always been kind of meh about truffles. I prefer solid chocolate. Very solid chocolate. But that's just me. But these are very lovely. The chocolate is indeed very good. It's not, you know, buttercream. Or, uh, I mean... Cocoa butter, not cocoa butter. But those are good. Kinda need, need some milk or a really good drink to go with it. Balance out some of the sweetness happening. But yes, quite lovely truffles. But I look tired. Because I had an all nighter at work last night. But that's okay, because that means no people. But that makes this look less than fresh. Anywho, I only have two more things left. It's technically the same thing, same, same snack. But this thing, I just had two different flavors. So it looks like I've got a lemon lime one and raspberry. So these are Trafin Vienna bonbons. I've always expected bonbons to be circular, but okay. You hear a lot about Belgian chocolate, but not so much about Belgian candy. If you do happen to hear about Belgian candy, it's most likely Trafin. I also, I apologize, I'm pronouncing that wrong. I feel like it shouldn't sound like that, but I don't really know how else it's supposed to sound. This is Belgium's most famous candy company. Founded in 1929, 
Heine Candy Shop has grown into a national brand and a childhood classic for many Belgians. One of their most famous candies, this fruit-filled confection inspired by one of Austria's most famous sweets, the Wiener Zuckerl from Vienna, hence the name. Inside this hard candy is a softer, chewier center, plus a potent burst of one of four flavors, orange, raspberry, plum, ooh, interesting, or lemon lime. Oh, I'm kind of sad I didn't get orange. I love orange stuff. Oh my goodness. If y'all get a chance to send me orange stuff, please do. Oranges. The world go around. And everything happy. So this is the lemon lime one. Little package. It's upside down. There's the candy. Sweet. Mmm, lemon lime. Mm. Tastes a little bit like those, um, sugar-coated lemon candies you can buy them in a bag. So I think this is gonna be a bit, gonna be a lot of sucking on the candy. Got a good flavor though. I always like the whole lemon-lime thing. Pretty tasty. So it's small enough now that I might give it a bite. It's pretty good. I'd like to get these. If I got trick or treating or something. Mm, good candy. A little chewy bit in the middle there. A little sticky on the teeth. A little bit. Ah. Well, gosh, that was good. So let's do. Let's go ahead and do the uh, raspberry. I fully expected it to be a completely different color than the lemon lime one. This looks exactly like the same color as the lemon lime, but it's gonna be different. Oh, that'll be fun. There's the raspberry. That's interesting. So used to everything being color coded to whatever color its fruit is. I fully expected it to be red. But it is definitely a raspberry. Which is good. I still wish I had more of that. And now for another round of sucking on hard candy. Alright, chew it. Pretty good. I like these candies. They're nice. Juicy and tasty and delicious. Pretty good. Alright. Well, we've eaten everything. It was all very delicious. Belgium, you got some good stuff. And not just the chocolate stuff. All the other stuff is all very good. Very, very tasty. So let's read our little tiny poetry thing. Find out where we're going next. What should you do on Thanksgiving Day? Eat turkeys and be thankful for yums on the way. One question remains, next month, where will we go? Read between the lines and you'll already know. Ah, read between the lines, what? Um, Thanksgiving Day. Stuff from America? No, oh, turkey! <laughs> turkey. I think we're going to turkey. For reading between the lines, there's turkey. We're gonna eat turkey. That'll be good. Be interesting. I was gonna say I've never had anything from Turkey before, but I've never had anything from Belgium before or any of these yum boxes that I've had so far. So you know. Anywho, thanks for tuning in. I did some I did another video, in case you haven't seen that. It's makeup. I look like I act like an idiot in it. I don't look like an idiot, I look good at the end of it. Oh, but just a little something else in case you're bored and have nothing to do and don't mind hearing me ramble. I don't know why you watch these videos. Whatever. Like, subscribe. Don't care. Do what you want.